All right, shall we get started? Looks like we're ready. Last few stragglers just coming in, sit down. We'll, we'll go ahead and get started and uh, file in as, as you can. Itai, you wanna? <coughs> yeah, hi, welcome. My name is Itai Mendelssohn. I work for Alcat Lucent. I run the development team of CloudBand, our NFT platform. And my name is Chris Wright. I'm the technical director for SDN and NFV at Red Hat. And uh, we are here to talk to you today about network function virtualization and the overlap with OpenStack. If I can figure out how to work this, this one. Voila. So just for our education, uh, who here is in the telco world and is very familiar with NFV? Why are you here? I mean, come on, you already know this stuff. Uh, and for those of you who are open stackers who are not from the telco world and interested in learning about NFV, the, the, the subset, all right. Well, we may have prepared the wrong talk. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll work through it. We'll, we, we can ad lib. Um, so today, what we want to do is bring, bring you up to speed on what is NFV or network functions virtualization so with uh, some examples, you know, look, looking at some actual use cases or applications that might be virtualized in a, in a service provider environment. Um, we'll build up a, a definition of an NFV platform. There is a, a standards organization um, within Etsy or an effort within Etsy to standardize something called NFV. It's where this, this term came from originally. And we'll try to take a look at that from the point of view of um, the standards bodies, reference architecture, and map that through to what it means to an OpenStack platform and what the components underneath look like, Linux, KVM, et cetera. And um, talk a little bit about when we combine these two together, NFV, telco requirements, and OpenStack, what's missing, uh, what, what makes NFV special, why are we here talking about this, why are we advocating for, um, for requirements coming from the telco segment, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, Red Hat and Alcatel Lucent and what we're doing together in this space. And hopefully we'll have plenty of time at the end for people to ask com uh, questions and have a dynamic conversation. I think this is you. Yeah, thanks. Oops, sorry, I went the wrong Maybe way. Maybe this one, yeah. So um, as Chris mentioned, maybe we didn't prepare the right slides. Um, we're expecting a more open stack forum than uh, NFV one, so maybe I will do it a little bit faster than, uh, than planned. Uh, if you want to stop me um, while I'm speaking, please do. Um, so we'll start just to, to, to state a, a common ground for all of us on what is NFV. So NFV is the term used today. I think in this room, um, most of you know it. Uh, the term that is used to describe the transition that service providers are doing today from um, the reality of today, where they have specific system uh, dedicated system, silo system usually for dedicated services uh, into a new reality where they have a common infrastructure, uh, multi-tenant serving a lot of services uh, based on uh, uh, off-the-shelf hardware or servers. Uh, some will call it cloud. Um, at the end of the day, what the service provider are trying to do is to build this cloud to start and run instead of dedicated um, systems for dedicated services just as applications on top of this cloud. Uh, why do they do it, right? What, what is the promise that stands behind it? Uh, so the first point is um, the promise for agility. Uh, today, to introduce a new service into this environment is very, very difficult. It's difficult from different reasons, from uh, budget perspectives, risk perspective, and actual operational aspects and operational processes within those companies. Um, the basic idea that once that you have and you switch the, the gears from a hardware play when you need to go and buy the dedicated system for a new service into a software play when you need to go and install a new application on a common uh, infrastructure that already exists should introduce a much simpler uh, processes and, and, and better agility. The second aspects are around operational uh, efficiency. I will touch about it later on in terms of what are the pillars that we believe that such platform needs in order to address this challenge. But at the end of the day, the promise is that 
while doing this thing and, and introducing all these concepts, uh, also a lot of operational efficiency will be gained. Uh, the, the next point that, uh, that this promise is bringing is cost efficiency, right? So just uh, as a small example, uh, yesterday was Mother's Day, right? So most of the system are planned for Mother's Day. So you want to have, uh, you want to support uh, a day as yesterday. Uh, but then the rest of the days, today, the system is under very, very low utilization. Once that you build a, a multi-tenant infrastructure, uh, you can obtain also cost efficiency, not only, but also cost efficiency by the fact that you can create an elastic environment. And the last point is about new revenue streams, ones that you have all these new goodies that I just mentioned. Just to, just to, to create a common language between us, uh, when we say an application, uh, usually an OpenStack, it's quite obvious for everyone what it is, right? So we all can imagine what an application is. Uh, we want just to share with you um, what is an application uh, uh, in the NFV world sharing with you the four most popular use cases that we see today in the market. Uh, the first one uh, is a virtual CP. The basic idea is today you have uh, a CP, a customer premise equipment, either in your business or at home. Uh, the basic idea is that you want to move a significant part of this functionality into the cloud uh, to introduce uh, uh, that we will uh, ease the operational aspects and they will help you to introduce new services in a much more easier way. So this is an example of an application that will run on such uh, cloud. A second example is virtual CDN. Uh, CDN, the uh, content delivery network. Uh, instead of having dedicated appliances that are uh, dedicated for CDN, you want to have an application that serves as a CDN that runs on your cloud obviously creating very interesting challenges, both from storage perspective and network and bandwidth perspective. Another example is virtual IMS, uh, the communication system. Um, um, again, today is based on a dedicated and specific systems. And the basic idea is to make those and take those as an application to run the cloud. What is this application? Is all the different components that you need in order to have our phones, our chat messages, video phones, and all this stuff. Uh, just working as part of the service provider network. Last example, uh, virtual EPC, the Evolve Packet Core, the basic components if you want to run an, uh, uh, a cellular network, a wireless network. So when we say applications in NFV, this is what we mean. It's not a web app or something like this. Those are applications with uh, some specific characteristics, but at the end of the day, the idea is to treat them and to think about them as apps. <clears throat> when, we, when we speak about NFV, there are like five pillars that we believe that are uh, needed and relevant uh, to keep the promise uh, that we mentioned before. Uh, the first one is around automation. So we spoke about that we want to obtain uh, operational efficiency. In order to obtain operational efficiency, we do believe that we need to have automation everywhere, bottom up, from the way that you manage and install your infrastructure the way that you handle the different life cycle events of your infrastructure, but also the way that you manage your applications uh, as, a, as an application owner uh, as all, and also as the, uh, um, as the team that is operating the cloud and the service itself. So you want to introduce tools and framework that will enable you to automate the different aspects and help them not only fully automated, but also exposed with programmable interfaces. So it can enable also integration with different system in an easy way. The second uh, pillar uh, is around distribution. Because we're speaking about network functions, um, at the end of the day, the promise is that um, the cloud will become the network if you want. So it's quite obvious that we cannot build a network that is uh, centralized. Right? So the basic idea and the basic assumption is that because of the essence of the workloads or the applications, uh, and, uh, you need to build a distributed environment. By distribution, uh, we see different approaches in the market. Some are speaking about distributions in the numbers of dozens, or they're in the numbers of hundreds, and there are some examples that are speaking also in the, in the numbers of thousands. It all depends on how far do you want to take this distributed environment um, uh, closest and closest to the endpoints of the application? 
but the basic uh, assumption is that uh, no matter what, you will need to create a distributed environment just because of the needs and the efficiency of the specific workloads. The third piece is around openness. We don't want to build this environment that is closed in a way that is difficult to consume, and it means all over, right? You don't want to create uh, any assumptions on the hardware that you are choosing to create the infrastructure. You must be totally open in this aspect. You want to use open source. This is why we are here. This is why we are uh, cooperating um, uh, with Trevat. We do believe that this is the right way to, uh, to build it. And also, uh, we want to expose all the services and all the uh, capabilities via open APIs so they can be easily consumed by the different both applications and the different systems uh, within the um, ecosystem of the service provider. The fourth pillar is around operations. Uh, we do believe that for creating this environment and, and again obtain the, the promise that I mentioned before, we need to be very focused on the way that we operate it. The way that we deal with challenges like uh, understanding where the problem is, right? If in today our reality in the service provider, it's, it's uh, quite clear the relationship between the application itself and the hardware that is underneath, you need to have tools that will help you to identify where the problem exists. Because now you have a common infrastructure, good chance it will be uh, delivered by one vendor and then an application delivered by another vendor. So you need to have tools and understandings to uh, efficiently uh, understand where the problem exists, both to solve it and to know how to address it. You need to have tools and ways to model your applications. VNF, uh, for the part of the audience that is not familiar with the terms, is, uh, is the name that the, <laughs> this industry gave for an application, a virtual network function. Um, but you want, and you want to have tools to model the application itself. So you can move from a situation where you have today when you have uh, operations uh, procedures into a situation when you have uh, a full automation of these procedures into uh, one framework. And you want to have all those aspects fully integrated with a network of the service provider. And in this case, uh, obviously we're not speaking about the internet as, as this is a usual case uh, in OpenStack. The last pillar to speak about is, is the, are the workloads themselves, that they do have some specific characteristics. The first one, uh, in some of the cases, you need more deterministic performance. You need to be able to, uh, to have more clarity on what will be the performance of the application, again, just because of the essence of the workload. The second one is, uh, is around network requirements. At the end of the day, we're speaking about applications that are serving mainly as network functions, so obviously you want to be very efficient uh, and, and uh, obtain and sustain the needs of those workloads from uh, bandwidth and network efficiency. Uh, that goes together with uh, the last point of data plane optimization. How do you help those applications to be efficient and to have at the end of the day the scale that we're speaking about, an efficient environment as it helps you to uh, deliver the services in this multi-tenant generic infrastructure. So what is an NLV platform? If you want an NLV platform, um, it's something that is following the pillars I mentioned before, and it has, um, if you want, a split personality. On one hand, it needs to serve the applications themselves, and it needs to serve all the needs of the applications. It needs to serve the application lifecycle management, it needs to give all the basic uh, services, compute, storage, network, it needs to have uh, or to expose, uh, let's call them generic services that are used by different applications. Load balancer as a service is a nice example. But because we're speaking about uh, a distributed infrastructure, you need to also give tools for the applications themselves to consume this distributed infrastructure in an efficient way, but also in an easy way. So you need to deal with the placement problems. You need to deal also with the security problems uh, and, and the assurance problems from the eyes of the application owner itself. On the other hand, a platform needs to serve also the, the cloud owner. We're speaking about the service provider that is building his own cloud. So the platform needs to serve him as well uh, to, to, to maintain and operate this distributed environment, to have all the different tools that you need uh, uh, to, to operate it, to analyze where the problems persist, to have tools to plan the capacity, 
So at the end of the day, from the application perspective, it behaves like a cloud per se, meaning from the application perspective, you have endless resources. What are the basic building blocks of, of, of an NFV uh, platform? Because we're speaking about the distributed infrastructure, the first building block is what we call the NFV data center. As I mentioned before, it can be a different levels of distribution, um, but this is the basic building block. And this is, this is the place where uh, we believe OpenStack has, a, a, has an amazing fit. This is the place where you expose the basic services, compute, storage, networking, monitoring. This is the place where uh, the different projects in OpenStack have a very clear and significant role, right? You need to have, as part of this uh, environment, um, just as an example, to expose, obviously, compute services. So, obviously, Nova has, um, has a trivial um, uh, uh, role over here. Same goals for uh, all the storage aspects, Cinder or Swift, uh, or Silometry. But also, there is a role for SDN that Chris will, will detail in a moment. Um, the second piece, is, 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 is the part that helps you to consume and to manage uh, all these distributed resources in a unified way. And in this piece, we see, uh, uh, we see different aspects that need to be covered that I already um, mentioned, so I will not uh, repeat them again. But also you need uh, something that will help you to manage your applications on top of this distributed environment. And this is where we see a significant role for HIT um, to serve as a basic component uh, to orchestrate uh, your application lifecycle management. Want to spend a few words on Neutron and Takeover? All right, so um, just to quickly recap, since I'm swapping myself in here, we are freeing critical functionality out of um, purpose-specific hardware and placing it in a generic computing fabric, uh, OpenStack, to provide network services. And, and what does that mean? Network services is sort of a generic term. You hear, actually, if you've been coming to OpenStack summits for a while, you hear network services as um, a language that makes sense also in the IT world. Talk about service insertion. Usually, it's kind of the load balancer, uh, firewall, VPN as a service type functionality. But in, in fact, it could be anything anything that's processing network packets. And one of the key components here is, is getting traffic to a specific network function. And often we see something that looks like a chain of functions or a service chain, uh, something that's uh, a series of pieces of network functionality connected together. And something like an SDN controller is in the prime position to make those traffic decisions and steer the network flows through each of the, of the services or functions in, in your uh, NFV environment. So I think it, it's important to, to reflect where are we. We're at the OpenStack Summit. We're talking about using OpenStack to meet some of the needs of the telco industry. And what are we building upon? We're starting at the very bottom. Uh, we, we, you know, Itai mentioned uh, a generic or, or, or commodity-type hardware infrastructure, building your, your compute fabric, uh, also potentially your, your storage and networking fabrics. Um, we're using Linux at the bottom of this to create the, the runtime environment for the services that, that are, uh, make up OpenStack, and then also KVM as a virtual, virtualization layer. Uh, KVM and Libvirt together working with Nova to provide the compute infrastructure for OpenStack as a, as a you know, concrete example, or, or for Nova as a concrete example. And when you look at this picture, here we have um, a set of these, of these NFV data centers. So these are not necessarily single point data centers. Again, this is, uh, Itai mentioned the, the geographic distribution of data centers uh, around a service provider's um, footprint. Each of these represent an, a unique OpenStack deployment. And we have all of the SLA requirements or assurance requirements that, that you've heard mentioned earlier um, coming into play in one of these environments. And uh, you know, you, you could even consider for the SDN case that there may be some use cases where you want to connect these data centers together dynamically across the WAN, uh, which is something that currently we're not really doing a lot in, in Neutron. Neutron is still fairly focused on a single data center uh, deployment. If you look at these pieces, Linux, KVM, OpenStack as the building blocks of an NFV deployment, 
each one of these actually needs some work to make them um, really appropriate for an NFB use case. Whoops. All right, so here's an eye chart. I won't hold you accountable for any of the details on here. Um, what you're seeing is the NFB architecture diagram as, de as defined by the Etsy NFB ISG. So this is a standardization effort describing uh, uh, it's essentially a group of operators coming together saying, we have a, a, an existential crisis. How can we remain relevant in the continuing uh, cost of doing business and presenting new services to our users? The, the way they can, they can do that is by virtualizing their infrastructure, and this is the diagram that they've come up with to, to explain that. And if you've not followed this, and you came upon this diagram one day, you'd run away screaming because it makes no sense. So our job is to try to translate that into uh, maybe a, a, a language that's more friendly to OpenStack, and you can see uh, th there's a lot of stuff here in the diagram. The lower por portion is called the NFBI. Um, the upper uh, pieces over here are, are management and orchestration, or MANO, and then you have a, a series of VNFs, or virtual uh, network functions. So, man, I can't operate this thing at all. All right, who's out there? Okay. I don't know my left from my right. Um, so if you look specifically at the NFVI, um, this is really a, a, a very great fit for the Linux KVM OpenStack stack that we've been talking about. It's broken across two pieces. One is the actual um, virtualization infrastructure. These are the compute nodes providing uh, capacity for applications and, and the, the storage and network fabric providing storage and network for these applications, and then some management infrastructure off to the right side here. If you look up the stack a little bit, you have this orchestration layer, and as, as we mentioned earlier, this is an area where heat comes into play. So if you talk about a VNF, a VNF sounds like a thing. Often VNFs are collections of virtual machines. So um, I believe they call them VNFCs or components, and the collection needs to be launched together you need to launch this in a way that makes sense to the application. So again, the application has really strict SLAs associated with um, packet processing throughput or uh, response times, deterministic response times. Coordinating the launch of something like uh, an entire VNF, which again might be multiple virtual machines, is something that you see off on the right side in the, in the VNF manager and part of the orchestration layer, kicking off Request to each of the individual OpenStack services to, to place this workload somewhere in, in your compute fabric. If you look at Nova, um, you know, we have some specific issues with what do we do with Nova? Where do we place this virtual machine when we go to launch this VNF? Uh, you'll want to make sure that that VNF is running in a very well defined uh, environment in terms of NUMA topologies and things that will affect the performance of this, of this application. Uh, you, you may have in, in the CDN space some, some specific storage requirements for streaming data to and from the storage subsystem. And again, for Neutron, here's the place where you're orchestrating each of these different functions to work together across the network. Question, yeah. Uh, so one of the things that have been in terms of debated is, is the Nova scheduler too dumb or is it too smart uh, where the too smart bites into its scalability. Um, what, are, what is your take on that, considering, uh, specifically in the telco environment, we're usually dealing with massive crowds, so we do have an interest in sort of a dumb scheduler, but we also need relatively advanced scheduler capabilities, so we have interest in the smart scheduler. So the, the question is, is Nova's scheduler too dumb or too smart, and um, how do you map the scheduling functionality that we have in Nova today to this type of environment? based on scaling requirements, and, and what kind of inputs are you taking for, for understanding how you schedule, and do you need to continually pull and look for a resource utilization, or is there some, you know, can you make it simpler and offload the problem somewhere else? And I, I mean, I, I have a personal opinion, which is the scheduler, it would be nice for the scheduler to take input from other systems. So it's actually critical, for example, for a VNF to have access to a PCI SI, SRIOV virtual function, of which there are a limited number on a box, 
you need to know ahead of time before you launch the DNF onto that box, does it even have that resource there? Um, probably not a real heavyweight discovery mechanism, but if you do that just within the, uh, with, without providing a pluggable way of giving input into the scheduler or maybe a stackable way of giving input into the scheduler, um, I, I know you won't solve the problem. Is it too dumb or too smart? I'm too far away from Nova development to really answer that question or have a, have a great insight. Um, but I know it's an area that is of under active interest, of active interest, or of interest and in under active development here during this particular design summit. So I don't know if you have a particular thought no, on that. I, I tend to agree. I think it's, it's a kind of a mix, right? There are things that are missing, so uh, I wouldn't call it dumb or smart, but things that are missing on the existing Nova scheduler that are relevant for this specific type of use cases, just as an even simpler example, right? So I have two servers in my rack or whatever number of servers in my rack and each of them has only one 10 gig interface. Now I have two workloads, each of them with six or seven gig needs in terms of bandwidth. I want to understand it and not place both workloads on the same server, right? This is something that consider it dumb, consider it smart, but this is something that we want to add and to, to add to the, um, to the function of, of a Nova scheduler. You will see it also actually in one of the slides following. So I don't think it's, it's making it much more smarter, but do accept more inputs and take under consideration some more specific things that today do not exist here um, to, to make a more efficient use of the resources and address the, um, the specific needs that we mentioned before. So, this is yeah, this is me. <laughs> so, is, is NFV so special, right? So, there is some tendency to, to think that NFV is very, very special and you need to build a lot of specific and dedicated things in order to, um, to obtain uh, and to create an NFV environment. Uh, we are not sure. Uh, we think that uh, there are some specific needs that we will address in a moment and we'll give you some examples of the tactical things that we believe that are missing. But do we do believe that those gaps should be part of OpenStack at the layer that we described before? Um, at, a, at the level of the NFV data center, we should address those gaps as part of the community, as part of the upstream. We do not think that there is something very, very special here that requires um, a specific, um, 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 a specific OpenStack um, implementation or a specific open stack version. And uh, this is all of, the, all of those needs are general enough and uh, relevant enough for other type of workloads. We just believe that there are, uh, those gaps should be addressed a little bit more specifically. But again, as part of the ongoing process of the community and as part of the big upstream as, and not as, um, as a fork, if you want. So what are the needs at the end of the day that you need to take under consideration? You need to take under consideration the distribution that we spoke about, right? You need to take under consideration the bandwidth intensive of the applications themselves. Uh, you need to take under consideration the large scale. At the end of the day, uh, if the promise uh, will be capped, we're speaking about a huge deployment with a lot of users, a lot of applications, and a lot of bandwidth. And you need to take under consideration the service provider network, right? You need to integrate it with the network itself. But when we summarize all these into what it means to OpenStack and what the hell it means for the gaps that exist today, we believe that the tactical list is, 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 is fair, is general enough, it should be addressed as not as a special project but as part of the community and Chris will go over some of the examples. So clearly this is not an exhaustive list and, and, and actually that's part of the point. Um, if you were, Earlier today, if you listen to Alan speak about NFV, um, he, was, he was also going through a similar uh, analysis and showing some of the differences of where OpenStack is now versus where OpenStack needs to be in order to meet telco or service provider requirements. And um, I think what's interesting there was, was Alan's perspective was really focused on, on these are really fundamentally different uh, requirements. And while I completely agree these are, these are new requirements, I, what we're trying to stress is this is not a deviation, a fundamental right turn 
from the OpenStack core mission. These are things that are incremental changes to OpenStack as it is right now that make it readily consumable in, in an NFV environment. So at the top of the list, you see as an example, um, SRILV support. We already have uh, emerging capabilities to manage PCI devices and directly assign them to um, virtual machines. So if you, if you remove OpenStack for, for a moment and you go back to just Linux and KVM, Linux has this functionality and KVM has this functionality. It's had it for quite some time. The ability to carve up a physical device into mul multiple virtual devices, actually dedicate that device directly to the virtual machine, and as a result, effectively bypass the hypervisor or accelerate the I.O. throughput into that virtual machine. Exposing that through the uh,